Anna passed away in September 2017 after a 14-month battle with bladder cancer. Those 14 months seemed like a, a blur. We went from this seemingly perfect world where we were all so very happy to a place where it all just got tipped completely on its head. Everything went so quickly. I remember lurching between these incredibly emotional, tear-soaked lows where we would receive the latest bad news to periods where we just got on with it and just did everything we could to, to beat this thing. Uh, we had a wonderful network of friends and family. That was our, our, our crutch that we, that we lent on um, and they were so important and valuable to us to provide advice just for someone to people to talk to um, to express our emotions, to, to cry, to... Um, I think the, the children coped well. They, they, seemed, they seemed to manage well right through Anna's illness and, and, and beyond. We were very open with, with Noah and Manon through all of this. We had... Um, conversations with them when, when, we, when we got the news. Um, I think that was important because they, they pick up on, on things very quickly. The kids are very intuitive and uh, you can't hide things from them, they know. So, um, so yeah, we, we, had, we had conversation. I think, I think that helped because they went on, on the journey, they went on the journey with us. So nothing was a big shock to them because they, they, they knew what was happening and they saw what was happening and they were part of what was happening. Anna was amazing. She was so proactive in researching all about her illness. Um, she was looking at all the options that, that were in front of her. Uh, she would do everything and anything to, to, that she could possibly do to, um, to, to give her the best chance. Um, she really took ownership and, and, and I think that's some real advice that I would give to anyone in this situation is, is to, you know, to take ownership, to research, to, to look at those options because they're not always obvious. In my work, what I, what I realized very, very quickly and it was very, um, important to me was that everything, the only thing that was important was family. Um, and that was, and it was Anna and, and that was all that mattered. Anna was a, uh, a practicing nutritionist and in that, in that job, she has to give a lot emotionally. Um, and quite soon after she got ill and in the knowledge that that this was you know, aggressive form of cancer and, and her health was deteriorating. She, she stopped practicing quite early. She didn't feel as though she had the ability to give emotionally when actually she needed to take. I look back now and I get incredibly upset thinking about how Anna's health deteriorated from this beautiful, fit, calm, happy spirit. Those images that I, I have in my head during, during her illness will haunt me forever. But I also look back in awe about how she kept so positive, so happy and so thoughtful of others right through this battle. And inside, she must have known what was happening and she must have known where this was going. But the fact she kept this such positivity around her right to the end was just, was just wonderful. The last few days were difficult. There was a point where Anna 
which was the, the first time which she'd said anything like this, where she said, I've just had enough, which was the, the first time that mentally she, she'd made that decision and that realization. But it was a, it was a weird time because because she she'd made that decision, but in actual fact, it was it was um, it was almost kind of a peace, the fact that she'd made that decision, and and, and we knew what was happening, um, and she went downhill very quickly from there. We the four of us, the four of us were together when she passed away, peacefully. She knew that we were there. She knew that the time was, was right. And although it was very upsetting, it was, it was always, always almost very beautiful. One of the things which I'm really grateful for during Anna's illness was we had the opportunity to talk. We had the opportunity to share emotions and share feelings. And we had the opportunity to say goodbye. That was with me, with, with, with the children, um, with, with family and, and with friends. And I f will forever be grateful that we, we had that opportunity and that time to, to do that. During that time, we had conversations, Anna and I had conversations, had conversations with, with the children around um, what was important to Anna. Anna wrote a letter to each of Noah and, and Manon, a, a private letter just for them, but it included sort of what Anna would hope that they would grow into, the things that were important to her, and the things that as a mum, she felt were important for them as they grew up. I think of Anna every day. I say goodnight to her every night. Noah, Manon and I share stories, the funny ones, the embarrassing ones, the good times. We, we mustn't pretend that she was never here. Anna and I, we, we're a great partnership. We're a bit of a yin and a yang. Anna was very much the, the beer. She would just be in her her just her presence and her, her beautiful calmness, whereas I was more doing. So I have to check myself regularly to, to make sure that the way um, that I'm trying to bring up the children is, is both representative of what I, I want to see in the children and my interests, and, but also of Anna's as well. Um, and it's really important to get that balance. Um, so I, I, I do check myself and I, I, I'm always thinking what, what would Anna want to do? Um, how, how would Anna react in this situation? Um, where should we go? What would I, where would Anna want to go? Just to make sure that we, we continue to have that balance.